Xbox Series S is, hands down, the cutest console of the next generation. It's also the least powerful. The Series S can hit resolutions above 1080p, but it doesn't support 4K gaming, and it has significantly less storage than the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5. And, of course, it doesn't have a disk drive. That said, the Series S is a formidable next-gen console that happens to be wrapped up in an adorable package. Let's start with a deep dive into those cute guts. The Series S has a 4 teraflop GPU, 10 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte internal SSD. In practice though, the console has 362 gigabytes of free space at launch, with the difference lost to preloaded software and background functions. The Series S is capable of hitting resolutions of 1440p and supports variable refresh rates up to 120 frames per second, though don't expect mini games to do both at the same time. The box lays horizontally, with a large black circle covering the fan on top. It's roughly the size of a shoebox, 10.8 inches long, about 6 inches wide, and 2.5 inches deep, weighing about 4.25 pounds. Notably, the fan itself is whisper quiet, especially when compared to the PlayStation 4, my main console this generation. The Series S shares design DNA with the Xbox Adaptive Controller, and really that's no surprise. Microsoft's goal with the Adaptive Controller was to build a stylish, functional gamepad for people with disabilities, one that seamlessly blends in with traditional gaming hardware. Design-wise, the Series S is essentially an Adaptive Controller cut in half, meaning they'll look natural together in anyone's living room. Speaking of controllers, the gamepad that ships with the Series S is a slightly tweaked version of the wireless Xbox controllers we know and love. Microsoft added a small share button to the center of the gamepad, and the D-pad is a complete circle, similar to the Elite. Otherwise, it's fully matte, with light texturing on the grips and the bases of the triggers and bumpers. For Xbox players, it feels like home. On the rear of the Series S, there's a port for Ethernet, HDMI 2.1, a Seagate expansion card, the power cable, and two ports for USB 3.1 connections. There's an additional USB 3.1 port on the front of the console, beside the Bluetooth button. Each port on the back of the console is placed above a unique set of braille-like bumps, making it easier to tell them apart by touch alone. It's incredibly convenient. Storage expansion is critical to the Series S, considering the relatively low amount of space built into the console. Microsoft partnered with Seagate to release a custom 1TB expansion card that mirrors its next-gen architecture, allowing players to boot up games directly from the card and still take advantage of its fresh features including quick resume, faster load times, and performance enhancements on old games. The Series S also supports external HDD storage via USB 3.1, but only for backward-compatible titles. The Seagate expansion card costs $220, which is just $80 cheaper than the Series S itself. But it works as advertised. There's no discernible difference between playing a game from the Seagate expansion card or internal storage. I was able to get 13 games and 23 apps on the Series S before I had to break out the Seagate. That's impressive, but it's also just a snapshot. The Series S has 362 gigabytes of free space at launch, and titles can run anywhere from a dozen to a hundred gigabytes. A game like Call of Duty Warzone, for example, clocks in at over 100 gigabytes, which eats up a third of the box's storage on its own. Thankfully, streaming apps like Netflix and YouTube usually take up less than 100 megabytes each. The boot-up process encourages players to download the Xbox mobile app, which makes it easy to sign in and set up the console from your phone. Even though the console doesn't support gaming in 4K, it can play video in upscaled 4K, so setup includes both 4K and HDR calibration prompts. When I tested out the Series X, it automatically asked me to link the console to my home's Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa network, but this screen didn't show up during my time with the Series S. Regardless, there's an option to link the console to a voice assistant network in settings, and that's the first thing I did. I can't stress this enough, I love yelling at my appliances. Turn on the small Xbox. Got it, turning small Xbox on. And then I started playing games. There's no way around it. Some titles look worse on Series S than on Series X, or PlayStation 5 for that matter. The disparity is even clearer in backward compatible games like Control. 
Due to the console's small amount of RAM, Series S games are upgraded from their Xbox One S versions rather than the more powerful One X. Control and many other multi-platform games run at less than 1080p on the One S, and unless they employ dynamic resolutions, they'll look the same on Series S. By no means is this a game-breaking or console-ruining observation, but 4K gaming is becoming the norm, and one of Microsoft's next-gen devices simply can't cut it. The Series S technically supports games at up to 120 frames per second, a factor that's much more important than resolution in competitive play. But again, this isn't going to apply to most games. Take Fortnite and Destiny 2, for example. They're both targeting 1080p and 60 frames per second on the Series S. Forza Horizon 4, which maxes out at 30 frames per second on the standard Xbox One, is available at 60 frames per second on Series S, and Gears 5 multiplayer hits 120 frames per second. Even without 4K, the Series S supports incredibly smooth gameplay. The Series S employs all the HDMI 2.1 tricks that the Series X does, automatically piping HDR, variable refresh rate, and game mode settings to supported televisions. It also has quick resume and faster load times for backward compatible titles, two features that make the new Xboxes sing. Quick resume allows players to cycle through a handful of games without having to close them down, essentially leaving them on pause in the system's background. These games are even available via quick resume after a restart, meaning you can shut down the Series S, go to bed, wake up, turn the console on, and pick up your games from exactly where you left them, with no time wasted on loading screens. Quick resume and faster load times are two factors that make the Series S feel like a next-gen console, despite its lack of 4K and middling storage space. In about a week with the Series S, I run into one issue that required a hard restart. I was making dinner and watching The Vow on the console's HBO Max app, which is trash by the way, when suddenly the scene froze and my soundbar began droning, repeating a single syllable from the audio track. The gamepad was useless at this point, so I held the Xbox button on the front of the console and it shut down. Everything restarted just fine and I haven't had any similar issues. The HBO Max app, however, is still tragic. As an all-digital, all-the-time console, the Series S is Microsoft's play for the Game Pass Ultimate crowd, and it's built to generate subscriptions in this digital ecosystem. Game Pass Ultimate unlocks a virtual library of more than 150 games, plus Xbox Live capabilities and access to xCloud, Microsoft's cloud gaming technology. All of this for just $15 a month, the same price as a Netflix subscription. There are more than 15 million Game Pass members in the wild today, and these subscriptions have been boosting Microsoft's bottom line for a few quarters now. The new generation represents a chance to make Game Pass an even larger and more sustainable aspect of the Xbox business, and both the Series S and the Xbox app offer plenty of opportunities to sign up. With its storage capacity limits, the Series S is also a chance to sell that $220 expansion card, raising the true price of the console to $520. That's $20 more than the price of a Series X, and it doesn't include 4K gameplay. This is the question at the heart of the new console generation. Do you buy the all-digital edition and save some cash up front, or drop a few extra hundred on a full-fat console with more storage space and power? If you're eager to get your hands on a console with smoother frame rates, rapid loading screens, and quick resume, the Series S gets the job done. However, if you want a console with longevity, the Series X is a better choice. Storage space is likely to become an issue for all Series S owners at some point, and games in the next gen are going to demand more power, not less. If it seems likely that you'll have to splurge for that Seagate expansion card on the Series S, it just makes more sense to get the big boy with all that storage built in. Of course, if what you really care about is the cute factor, then the Series S is the only console for you. For all of our console reviews and video game news, subscribe to the Engadget YouTube channel and stay tuned to Engadget.com.